Good evening and welcome from the Walt Price Sports and Fitness Center here on the campus of Everett Community College. It is NWAC men's quarterfinal basketball and tonight's matchup is the Portland Panthers with an overall record of 24-5 versus the Spokane Sasquatch with a record of 22-8. Two teams vying to make it into the final four. Two teams who would love to win another championship. Spokane last winning in 2016. Portland 2014. One of these teams moves on to the semifinals. One of them heads home tonight and ends their season. Who will it be? We'll find out. We're going to take a quick break, come back, get you ready for action, and right to the game. You are watching STSPN.com. The first day of school is kind of scary. You don't know your teachers yet or who your friends will be. But school is really important. It's how you learn things and grow. Okay, I'm ready. You're going to do great, Mommy. For you. For them. Clark College. Get started today at clark.edu. And we are just about ready for the third of four quarterfinal games here in the NWAC tournament. Already punching their ticket earlier today, Peninsula and Lynn Benton. Who will be the third team? Will it be Spokane? Will it be Portland? Mike Buckholtz, we're about to find out. We are, and I chatted with a couple of players from each team uh, while they were watching the previous game, and they sounded very excited about renewing this rivalry, even though they are not in the same division. They uh, definitely feel a rival rivalry aspect to this contest. Not in the same division. However, they did play back on December 1st, a game that Portland won 92-84. The Panthers would love to duplicate that and punch their ticket into the Final Four. Spokane, we'll see what they can do about putting them in check and making sure they cannot do that today. Let's get to the starting lineups really quick as they are being introduced out on the court right now. Both teams going with the same starting five they went with yesterday in their victories to get here. Portland winning that game over Bellevue, 72 to 67. And Spokane defeated Tacoma at 97-77. For the Portland Panthers, under six-year coach Tony Brodius, his starting lineup is number 20, KJ Bosco. He is a six-foot sophomore out of Benson High School in Portland. Get ready to hear that a few more times. Benson High School, three of the five starters coming from that school. Number 23, Gabe Garrett. He's a six-foot-four sophomore from Jefferson, also in Portland. Number 30, Cameron Rutherford. He is a six foot eight sophomore from, guess where? Benson. Number 32 is Brendan Richard. He is a five foot 11 sophomore from, or freshman rather, from Centennial in Gresham. And then number 55, Frank Norman, a five foot 11 sophomore also from Benson High School. And then we go across the state to Spokane, the Sasquatch. Head coach Jeremy Groth in his sixth year. We mentioned earlier they are, were the 2016 champs as well as the 2000 champs. Would love to put another trophy in the case at the school. And looking at their starting lineup, number two is Cameron Gay. He is a six foot four sophomore from Lakeside High School over in Spokane. Seventh in the NWAC in scoring or assist this year with 5.1 per game. Number three is Diedrich Pakudas. He is a six foot one freshman from Lewis and Clark. Number five, George Pillamay, a six foot six sophomore from Shadel Park in Spokane. Number 20, Ryan Alexander is a six foot sophomore from Gonzaga Prep, also in Spokane. And then finally, number 33, Caesar Sandoval, a six foot six sophomore from Moses Lake. Sandoval in yesterday's game over Tacoma, 20 points and 10 rebounds. He, in fact, was the leading scorer for the Sasquatch as they advanced into the round of eight. Some prominent scorers on both teams. Sandoval averages 19.6, so 
Uh, you just want to say, well, he was the leading scorer, but he had basically for him it was an average game. He's a, a big-time scorer for the Sasquatch. And for the Portland Panthers, the leading scorer is Gabe Garrett, averaging 20.1 points per game. Sasquatch, a team that likes to get it done up and down the floor. They averaged 93 points per game this year. That is leading the NWAC in all of scoring. Portland getting it done with a little more on defense. They are 16th in scoring. However, they are 9th in scoring defense against them this year. 84 to 76 ratio. Tip is up in the air, and we are underway. Portland wearing the home white uniforms. They will take the first possession. Frank Norman out on top. Swings it over to Richard. Slowing it down a bit. We mentioned Portland, not necessarily the highest scoring team in the league, and they will, in fact, take their time and get the look they want. Yeah, facing a man-to-man -man defense. Look, you and uh, Portland's using a little man uh, motion offense. First shot of the game off the mark. Offensive board coming down. Norman driving right side, kicks it out, and we're going to get our first whistle of the game, and it is a travel, which will turn the ball over to Portland, or turn the ball, rather, over to Spokane. And Portland going to show some man-to-man -man Full court pressure, not totally intense, but uh, that wears on you after a while. Working the ball around, wearing the blue traveling uniforms. Mentioned how they like to get up and down the court. Taking their time on this first possession, we're going to get a foul called. Yet to be determined if they're going to call that a shooting or not, as that was number 15, Pilame driving into the lane, and in fact they are going to give him a... Shooting call that will be on number 20, Bosco, his first, first team foul. Now some of the differences in the women's game that we have been doing, they play four quarters now in the college women. The men still staying with the 20 minute halftime. Pillame missing the first shot, connecting on the second. He's an 88.2% free throw shooter on the year, so something that we don't see very often is a miss from him. Portland back on the other end. Again, very patient here early going. We're used to seeing some of these games just get up and down the floor like a track meet. We're not seeing that here thus far, and as soon as we say that, here comes Spokane on the other side. Little shoulder into the lane. Three ball up in the air. Hits it. <laughs> yeah, nice. Akudas. Buries the three. He shoots 42% on the year from the Trey Stripe. Still looking for their first points. Portland driving into the lane. Norman misses the shot right there to pick it up and put it in is K.J. Bosco, and they are on the board for the first time this evening. Boy, and Sandoval right away starting to be very physical as uh, a lot of contact the other end, and just now I saw him take both hands and shove off number 55, Frank Norman, who was down on the floor. Looks like maybe he got... Poked in the eye, and my guess is that the referees are going to be going over and taking a look at a replay here. Yeah, you might be absolutely right. That was one of those plays where my eye shifted down the floor already. I didn't even see the play. It was a, right oh. at the free throw line, as you see Norman still well, he had playing some, on the ground. He had some contact down here where you said he lowered the shoulder a little bit, and they let that one go, and he kicked it out, and uh, the three-pointer was made. And then there was a little bit of contact between three or four players here, but on the way down the floor... He shoved number 55, Frank Norman, off. And referee asked him what happened, asked Sandoval what happened. And Sandoval looked at him and was given the, well, he had a hold of my jersey defense. And so we'll see <laughs> we'll see if that defense actually flies on the, on the video here. Sometimes you're found guilty, sometimes you are not. And, Mike, you're a longtime coach. You've coached high school basketball for many years. Tell, tell us about the uh, – the, um, the whole process of going to the monitor is it something you enjoy is it something you don't like as we watch the replay here and it's i'm watching it just now and i've maybe todd elvick can roll it back again i i still didn't see it it looked as though it was almost one of his own players there but no it was it was definitely standable i had a pretty good look at it well here, here, we, here we go right here so as we go down and there oh this, you're right <laughs> big old shove sandoval not a small guy either we might add uh, he's a, he's a, looks like a strong young man. Getting back to your question, in terms of going to the monitor, I think when you have things that are significant in the game, you want to get it right. On the other hand, it slows things down, and so you want to be able to make a decision relatively quickly. Um, and they're back out here. It was uh, relatively fast, and I think down towards the end of games, uh, it's fine. But uh, we had some stoppage the other night. There was... 
five or six stops in one game, and they stopped it with one second to go in the game, and it was a 40-point game. So, um, <laughs> I, I do recall that game, and that was a little bit strange. And I understand that they want to get it right, but uh, you know, I don't know how to decide whether you get uh, whether the coach can ask for a review and you give them three reviews a game or however that might work, and let's see what they're going to call here, if anything. Referee's still congregating over at the table right now. Looks yeah. like they're ready to play. I don't think they're it, calling anything. It appears as though, yes, yeah, Spokane is going to have the basketball, so certainly that would indicate that Sandoval is not going to be called for a foul. Still only showing one up on the board. And I don't think uh, Coach Bradas is uh, too happy with that. Now, if you are not going to call anything in this particular case, then what is the conference for at this point? That's the, that's the question right now. Well, they might also be looking, trying to get a reset on the clock. I mean, there's any number of things, and... Uh, oh, oh, I see. We're waiting for a sub to come in. Since they had to stop play, so Norman probably has to come off of the floor, and he's going to go right back in. Good to see there as we were watching him, and he was getting looked at even as recently as about a minute and a half ago, so happy to see that he is okay after that hard play. Portland with the basketball once again, trailing 4-2. to two. Maybe they decided it was a soccer flop. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And rather Spokane basketball right there. Down low, kick out, three ball up. Buries it. Yeah, some zone defense that time by the Portland Panthers, and good ball movement made him pay. Yeah, that was Ryan Alexander. They're getting the three. Spokane now 7-2 lead. Early here in the going, 17-45 left. Shot is missed. That was Rutherford. Goes up trying to retrieve his own rebound. Missed the shot, but we do get a foul called. Nice defense that time by Sandoval uh, bothering the shot. <laughs> foul will be called on number three. On the rebound. It's Pakudis, his first. Shot is up, off the mark. Rebound by Spokane, already up by five, looking for more right now. Alexander swings it from left to right. And Cameron Frank. Gay, one of the leading assist players in the league, and gets that shot blocked from behind by Norman, and we get a whistle. Yeah, Frank Norman had returned. I was just going to say, uh, out playing some tough man-to-man -to -man defense. Basically a position call as he got beat and tried to recover by going for the block. Nine times out of ten, that's going to result in a foul, and... We have Cameron Gay at the free throw line. A 75% free throw shooter makes the first one. The average is 13.6. Some prolific scores on the floor, double-digit double, uh, double digit scores for both teams. Spokane, if you look at their starting lineup, Pillamy is their fifth leading scorer of the group, and he averages almost 10 points per game, so certainly they can distribute the ball rather nicely. Again, you mentioned earlier Sandoval with the 19.6. The next number down is 13, so we definitely will expect to see a lot of these guys yeah, you get five, Getting close to the double-digit mark, if not over. You get five guys in double digits, that's a recipe for success, for sure. Indeed it is. There's the three ball. Count it! Bosco. Bosco with all five of the points for Portland here thus far. Cutting that Spokane lead down to 9-5. 16.52 to go here in the first half. Quarterfinal basketball. The winner to move on to play Everett or North Idaho next week. That game will be played later on tonight. We get the basket from Tillmy right there. Yeah, that was a tough hoop. Are we going to count that? Well, that's going to get an eruption from the coach on the 50-50 call. Take a look and see if there's going to be a replay here to see what we have the advantage. Oh, they count the basket. There we go. I was waiting to see the uh, the call there. Sorry about that. Well, no, that's all right. So uh, here it is. You take a look to see who initiated the contact. And uh, looked pretty close to a charge to me, but uh, if you're the offensive player, you'll take it. Cameron Rutherford with a three-point play there. His first points of the night makes it 8-11 right now. Spokane out in front. Cameron Gay picked up the foul on the play. Each team now with two team fouls. Just three and a half minutes into the opening half of the ball game. Sandoval, little hook shot into the lane, misses it. Ball bounces around. Picked up by the team in white. That is the Portland Panthers. Three ball up in the air. Bosco with another tray. Eight 
points for him, and we've got a tie game 11-11. Yeah, we're now down at the 16-minute mark. Bosco Average is just shy of 13, and uh, he's on fire right away. He's going to have that to, for the end of the quarter if that keeps up. Three ball on the other end. This one is well off. Overhand pass there. Here comes Portland once again into the lane. Rutherford floater misses it off the back iron, bounces around. He's able to bat it out to one of his teammates. That's 32, Brendan Richard. Shot up, 17-footer. Good. And he's feeling it right now. KJ uh, Bosco on fire. Yeah, Rutherford with the miss, and he did pull up down the lane, but uh, we had a great view as he floated forward, and the ball hit the back rim for Portland. They got the rebound, though, and kicked it out to the man with the hot hand. Great hustle play by Frank Norman. They're able to knock the ball out of bounds, and he is right up in the grill of Cameron Gay right now. He's shadowing him wherever he goes. KJ Bosco, good range for a 6'7 player. Spokane looking to get it down low. Kicking out. This is for the lead. Hits it. Nice inside out. By the Sasquatch. Pillame with another basket. He now has six in the opening half. 14-13. Spokane out in front. Game that's going back and forth. Portland looking for the lead once again. Missing the shot. Getting the offensive board. Frank Norman thinking about it. That was number 32. Ritzard finally loses the basketball. Here come the Sasquatch once again. Sandoval, big man, thought about the three, throws it down low, beautifully done. Nice defensive play. It's number 20, Bosco swatting that one out. Three look, misses. Comes down into the hands of the Panthers, and here they come once again. Yeah, good recovery. Somebody got lost on defense there, and Bosco managed to recover, get the block shot. Spin move baseline, wanted a foul. That was Gabe Garrett. Nice rebound and outlet right there by uh, Pacutis. Three ball up in the air once again off the front iron. Misses it. Here come the Panthers wasting very little time. Ritzard gets into the lane all the way. He gets his first points. One of the keys to defensive transition is you have to get back, but you also have to stop the ball and try to pick up. You can't just get back and stand around, and uh, that hurt the Sasquatch that time. Right back at it again. Other side. Nice defensive play as Richard might have gotten a hand on that ball at the very least. Threw him off of his game a little bit there. And on the other end, Frank Norman getting his first two of the night. Portland now up 17-14. Dribble penetration hurting Spokane right now as the Portland Panthers are getting to the rim. Sandoval got that harm up in the air. He wants that basketball. They swing it over to the left side. Gay driving into the lane, kicks it out. Norman a little too feisty there. Might have gotten a little contact, and he's going to draw the foul. Looks like we got a timeout coming up here as a double team down on the post player resulted in a foul. A lot of action going on here. Plenty of lead changes early on at 17-14. Portland over Spokane. You're watching NWAC basketball on STSPN. CC Trivia Time. Here we go, Mike. Why do 19,000 students choose Everett Community College every year? Because we are in such a great athletic facility here. Come here to the gym. You can work out, take your PE classes. Great facility. Those are great answers. It's not the one we were looking for. The answer at EVCC. Faculty know your name and care about your future. Register now for spring classes at everettcc.edu. Although... I, I did like your answer, and I'm sure that 
does factor into why some of these folks are actually Trojans and going to school here at Everett Community College. And perhaps it's because this campus is gorgeous too, by the way. The last time I answered the other one, it was wrong. There's, there's a few different answers. <laughs> Sandoval <laughs> putting the shoulder into it, getting his own board. And we're going to get an, oh, we're going to count the basket and the offensive foul. Is that correct? Well, we're letting him play down underneath, and it looked like uh, someone tried to draw the charge. They let that go. Sandoval got it back and stayed with it. He's a 6'6", and a powerful young man, stayed with it, got the rebound, and then basket counted, but he also got the foul. You don't usually see a player uh, picking up a point and a foul all in the same play, and that's exactly what Sandoval did. His first of the game, I might add. 17-16 as Spokane does cut the Portland lead down to one. Portland looking to go back up by three again, and they do as Gabe Garrett gets his first two. And I should mention, too, we, we talked about it earlier, Portland, a lot of different scores, five players so far already on the board. And Garrett averaging 20 points a game. The Sasquatch tried to double down on him but then left him, and he made the one-on-one -on -one move. Gay kicks it out. Open look three. Misses. That's Lamar Harris getting his first action of the night as he checked in during the timeout. Right down on the other end, Portland driving baseline. That's Bosco. I had it stripped. Nice defensive play there by Cameron Gay as he knocked the ball out of Bosco's hands and it went off of Bosco out of bounds. So Spokane gets the ball back. Spokane basketball down by three as Gay getting a little pressure there. That's Ooh. Terrell Hicks Jr. also getting his first oh, action of the man. night. There was almost a collision. Averted that screen. That's Hick, a quick Hick, look there. Hicks from Las Vegas, Nevada. He was gambling on himself there. Nice lob pass. Count the basket. Yeah, come off of a set play as Harris makes the pass and then comes off a nice screen at the top set by Cameron Gay. Got the beautiful pass and laid it in. Nice point indeed. 19-18 is our score. We're going to get two more players checking in right now. For Portland, number 11, Joe Morales coming in for the first time tonight. Morales is a six-foot sophomore from Roosevelt High School down in Portland. Also checking into the game right now. Number five, a local guy, Isaiah Gotell, from right here in Everett, Washington, Cascade Bruin. He won a district championship on this very court back in 2016. You think he's, a, he's excited to be, to be playing in front of the home crowd right now? Cascade wins the district championship in 16. Huh? That's, uh, they don't do it very often, right? Basket counts. J.R. Delgado getting his first two. And we mentioned earlier that Portland, a lot of different players getting on the board. Now back Spokane has seven different guys with points already, and we're not even at the, uh, the 2019 mark. Not back since the days of Charlie Cobb, who was the longtime coach at Cascade. It's almost a, uh, like a unicorn. Is that what you're saying when Cascade wins a uh, district championship in the no, uh, 21st I, century? Not necessarily like a unicorn, but it was last century. <laughs> <laughs> Go tell with a smile on his face. It's hard to believe we're in 2018 already. It went I, so quick. I think about that every once in a while. Yeah. Of course, these guys out here, they were uh, barely around in the 20th century, so it doesn't seem like it's all that strange to them. But nonetheless... Time does fly when you follow basketball in this area, or any for that matter. And Now we are at 2018, looking to crown a NWAC champion next weekend. Nice move there, turnaround move. Lamar Harris with his second bucket of the night. Spokane taking that lead back up to three, but wasting very little time on the other end is Gabe Garrett with his second bucket. Back and forth, back and forth. We got a 22-21 game. And getting the, hand, the ball into the hands of Garrett down underneath the basket, that's a very good option Ooh. as Garrett just got hammered on a screen by Cameron Gay, and that's going to be a foul. And Gay was crying for a little incidental contact. He's still talking to the referees. Not going to work as Gay picks up the foul. Got him down up here for two fouls. The board's showing one right now. We'll see if they correct that later on. Gay does take a seat on the bench. Or no, he rather he stays in after talking to the coach. He was so over there talking to Jeremy Groth a minute ago. And so far, I like the way the game's being officiated. Very consistent, letting them play, calling the things that do matter so far. And you like that. Like that too. A three ball is Joe Morales getting his first points of the night. Making it a 24-22 game as Portland once again taking the lead. 
We'll get some stats up here at halftime, but a lot of back and forth lead changes. We almost had another there as that ball was up in the air and would have given Spokane the one point advantage if they had been able to make it. That was J.R. Delgado missing the shot. Yeah, just coming in uh, off the bench. I know certainly John Wooden generally like to get a touch or two before he started shooting outside <laughs> shots. And, uh, you know, I suppose it's different. Uh, a beautiful no look pass there. Didn't quite get the look they wanted, but uh, once again getting back in there. That's Lane Josie. Josie initially looked like he was going to have an assist, ends up getting the point instead. Six foot eight sophomore from Liberty. He's from Hillsboro, Oregon. Another player who just came into the game not too long ago. There's Portland now out to a four point lead. Ball hits off the front iron. Another board. Here come the Panthers once again, looking to extend. Yeah, since Sandoval's been over on the bench, uh, Spokane has been a little bit reluctant to try to pound the ball down inside except for that uh, one hoop by Harris. Definitely a different look without Sandoval in there, that's for sure. Oh, another hook shot, this time Josie from about 11 feet out. Josie now with four points. 28-22 Portland. Still staying with their man-to-man. -man. And we're going to get the charge. Nice job, Terrell Hicks standing his ground. As Delgado coming in, trying to do just a little bit too much. He liked the dribble penetration, but you must recognize the defense. Good help side defense by the Portland Panthers. And we get yet another break here. 8.56 to go here in the opening half. Portland 28, Spokane 22. You are watching NWAC quarterfinal basketball on STSPN. Strong. I won't give up. I put my heart into the game. I learn from my mistakes. Focus. Determination. Confidence. I trust my gut. No limits. Preparation. Dedication. Leadership. I want to make my team and family proud. Be an inspiration for other girls who like sports. Join, Join the movement. movement. Clark College in Vancouver, Washington is enrolling for spring quarter. Whether you want to advance your career, complete a degree, or earn your high school diploma, Clark College can help you reach your goals. Visit clark.edu to learn more. Spokane coming out, going to change things up a little bit with some full court pressure, see if they can change their defensive luck here in this contest, second quarter. Yeah, trailing by six right now is Portland looking to build on that. Terrell Hicks up on top. Swings it on over to Rutherford, down low, nice move, 22, Landy. Fade away shot on the left side, misses it. Rebound comes down to number 20, Ryan Alexander. Yeah, so often happens on the fade away, a uh, little bit short on the shot, nice defense that time by Spokane. Pakutis with the ball. Shifts, gets it back on over to Alexander. Spokane, we mentioned it earlier, the leading the league with 93 points per game. Expecting some quicker shots, and there we go. Pilme once again with another three, giving him nine for the night. Yeah, good range for him. He likes to post up, and then he came off of the post up and went out and busted the three. Yeah, likes the three ball. 41% shooter on the year. We mentioned earlier, averaging 9.8. He's almost already there. That ball well short. It's 42, Jossie. Yeah, it worked out well as it skimmed off the rim and right into the hands of Rutherford there for the opportunity for three-point play the old-fashioned way. Rutherford's going to step to the line for one, or two rather. He's the only one with a free throw shot so far for Portland, and it was a one-shotter. One it was an end one earlier. Yeah, the basket was good, so he just got the... Just oh, he gets, did make the basket. Yeah, okay, just, we were... Just gets the one. His second three-point play of the night then. 31-25. Sandoval back into the game. 
Backing down the defense, loses it momentarily, gets his own board, trying to go back up again. Stripped by Hicks. Here come the Panthers in transition. Left side, layup good. Landy taking the pass from Hicks, making it an eight-point Portland lead. Again, numbers coming the other way. Richard doing a good job on the defense. Okay, nice flow back. pass Josie. over the defense to Sandoval. Sandoval gets a block momentarily, goes back up for a second attempt, gets the basket. It looks we get like an immediate whistle. Rutherford maybe shook up on the play there. Lane Josie trying to battle the very strong Caesar Sandoval underneath. I'll tell you what, he gets down inside the block, between the block and the basket. Uh, he's going to be tough. It's kind tough of a get out of the way moment at that point. We have to try to do something, maybe doing a little front, trying to keep him out of the off the block. Nice job getting into the lane. Hicks gets on the board for the first time tonight. 35-27. Panthers once again back out on top by eight. Yeah, a little Euro step crossover move. Did the job. Takes it out. Pilme thought about a three, shuffled the feet, travel called. Portland now with a chance to go up by double digits. Yeah, if you up fake and go. You split those feet, but I mean, that's a autom pretty much an automatic call by the official. You can up fake, but you've got to make sure you get the dribble down before you lift that pivot foot. 6.50 left here in the first half. One of these teams punching their ticket to the semifinals tonight. That game to be played here next Saturday. Nice job of passing the ball around. Portland gets the open three. They won! Josie! His first tray of the night. He now has seven points. Portland with their largest lead, 38-27. Yeah, both these teams have some talls that can bust the step out and bust that three. In this day and age, you almost have to, don't you? Game has definitely changed, that's for sure. Pilme goes up, puts the seven-foot floater up, misses it, ball bounces around. Here comes Portland one more time. Yeah, it's somewhat difficult to find somebody who's uh, the true old-school style of center <laughs> these days. The game has changed, you are correct. Indeed it has, nice pass down low, getting it, blocking the shot perhaps from behind. It looked like Pillamy might have gotten part of it. Sasquatch on the other end. Delgado, by the way, he had 17 points in 17 minutes last night, coming off the bench. We've got a hold inside as one of those three-point shooters, George Pillman, trying to post up inside, and he was grabbed, so out-of-bounds opportunity for Spokane. You can't do that, right? Well, you can't if you, you get, can't away get away with, with it. it. If they're not looking, that's good. <laughs> that's the, that's the other coach in here that I like here. Sandoval showing a little spin move there. Acted as though he was going to go inside. Spun it back out. Gets the nice layup for him. Always Six that, points. Always that advantage to get to the block rather than inside. If the inside is there, you'll take it. But the block's a better look. Morales three comes off. Pilme says, you know what? I'll wave you off. I'll take this one up myself. Nicely done. It's it on over to Alexander. Back to Sandoval. He shoots the three. Nice job by Pilme coming in, flying in to get the rebound. Dishes it out. Alexander, open look three, left it short. And grabbing the ball, Jossie one more time as Portland looks to push it up the floor. 5-12 to go in the first half. Here comes Hicks, left baseline, misses it. Delgado putting a little pressure on him, forcing him into maybe the shot that he didn't want. Gay looking for a cutter across the middle there. That was number 32, Delgado. Threw it behind him, turns it back over to the Panthers. Found an open photographer under the basket <laughs> instead. I think Terrell good, Hicks good. is kind of uh, kicking himself mentally down here as he had opportunity for the layup. No defensive help from the weak side by a Spokane, so he had opportunity for that layup and missed it and then turn over at the other end, another opportunity for Portland. Finding the open photographer often leads to a nice photo op, but uh, certainly doesn't help you up on the the board does it unless you have a radio face like us <laughs> <laughs> nice bank shot there from about 17 feet out Jossie give him nine points already here on the night 40 29 is our score and I heard him calling bank did you hear that I, yeah you almost have to if you're that far out don't you nice little touch on that ball I was surprised once it hit the the window there I thought it was coming off and it found its way into the cylinder and a little bit of a defensive change as they're trying to front the post now, if they can get around him, down underneath, that being uh, Sandoval. Alexander scoops one up underhanded, misses it. Jossie doing a nice job of both guarding Sandoval and grabbing the offense, or the defensive board, rather. Now he wants to shoot it on the other end. Pro three! Hits another one! Lane Jossie on fire! Give him 12 points here in the opening half. Give Portland the 14-point lead. We'll take a quick break. You are watching STSPN. 
Keith Appleton, Education Outreach Officer at STCU. I have been labeled as frugal. I'm more motivated by saving money than I am about spending money. I essentially have had the same vehicle for nearly half my life. It's absolutely practice what you preach. One of my passions is mountain biking, and one of the ways that I can afford to have a quality mountain bike is by cutting expenses in other areas of my life. STCU has given me an opportunity to share things that I've learned with the community. I'm Keith Appleton, and STCU is here for good. Folks, be sure to check out the NWAC on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for all the latest NWAC news. Also visit nwacsports.org for the most recent information on schedules, scores, stats, and oh so much more. NWAC all over social media. Mike Buckholtz, I know you're excited about that. I went and listened to or uh, watched a little bit, I should say, on the YouTube last night. There you uh, go. When I was uh, uh, home. With my day off from broadcasting, I enjoyed it. I enjoy uh, going back and watching those games as well, and uh, I, too, I use a lot of the social media here, in particular Twitter. I know they do a nice job of keeping us up on what is going on with various things, including photos and scores and other updates when you're not able to actually watch the game in person or on a mobile device or computer, for that matter. Fortunately, a lot of you are out there watching this game right now and enjoying it. If you're from Portland, probably more so than the folks from Spokane. Yeah, Portland uh, taking uh, turns with the hot hand for a while there. It was number 20, K.J. Bosco, and more recently here in the second quarter, it's Lane uh, Josie. He's been filling it up for the Panthers. Indeed, he has. Uh, coming off that bench there and putting up some total so far. Leading score with 12 points. Now down under the four-minute mark. Losing the ball. Pacudas, here come the Panthers one more time. We're going to get a kick ball call there. And we are, and I'm going to take a look and see if they reset the clock. I saw what I thought was a kick. We talked about that earlier when you were in doing your homework or watching the screen. A uh, kick ball goes out of bounds, and it stays at 26. So I'm guessing they just leave the clock where it is unless maybe it's under 15 and they reset it to... Where's it? The, call, the high school game, you immediately the, get that shot clock you get reset. That, you get that reset off the soccer kick, yep. The soccer kick, I like it. Portland with the basketball. Garrett into the lane. Realizes he doesn't have the look he wants. Kicks it out to Landy. Back into Garrett. Looking for Jossie uh, momentarily. Ball gets batted into the air, and a whistle gets called as we're going to have a foul. And I like what Garrett's doing. He's the leading scorer at 20.1, but he's not forcing shots. He's trying to post up. Spokane's being very physical with him. Inside, he's kicking it back out, reposting. It got the ball, and he was grabbed that time. Opportunity at the free throw line for Gabe Garrett. Yeah, 71% shooter. One and one as we are at our seventh foul on Spokane here in the half at the 339 mark. First shot is up and in. Give Garrett five points now on the night. Did you see who that foul was called? I on? was waiting for them to put it up on the board, and they haven't done it yet. So well, Alexander was matched up with him, but I think the grab came from help. Alexander doing a good job of trying to keep Garrett off of the block and forcing him to make that pass back out. Nice job of getting into the lane. Floater misses it. That was Harris. Gets his own rebound, kicks it out. Sandoval almost went up for a three. If he had, he might have gotten a block from behind. Dribble drive, kicks it out. Three ball up. Off balance shot. Missed. That was number 32, Delgado. And once again, the Panthers looking to extend their lead. Already up by 16 and wanting more right now. Good patience by Spokane, but right now they are just cold shooting. Can't, uh, can't seem to get any uh, op uh, hit the open shot. Nice job by Garrett down low. Had three defenders on him. Put a fake move on there, went underneath, and had a look he wanted, just couldn't get the ball to fall. And maybe a little bit of a frustration foul there. We've seen that since the beginning of time in basketball, haven't we? The, uh, the old missed the three or four footer, and immediately as soon as you... Uh, you go back on defense, you get that reach and call yeah. almost right away. Yeah, go in and judo chop somebody and <laughs> take out your frustration on the opponent, so to speak. Everybody in the game right now, by the way, one with only one foul, other than Portland, who has Norman in there with two right now. Ball gets knocked away. As we look out there, Norman not even in the game. We're looking at the board. They uh, haven't changed the players up on the board yet. Michael Landy with a good block, and like I said uh, earlier, and. I still think the officials are doing a good job. They're letting them play, but uh, keeping the guys under control as well. 
Now, 13 fouls total so far. Spokane with seven, Portland with six, so it's even on that front. Nice job finding Harris down low. Misses the shot, but he's going to head to the line. It's Cameron Gay showing that he can get the assist and get the uh, his players in position to score, well, not only when he's dribbling the ball down the floor, but also when he's inbounding. And there are some players that don't mind when they get their shot blocked because what that means is that the player who's defending you now may try and block every single shot. And uh, the last block shot was by Michael Landy, and he just now joined the parachute club on that <laughs> at the defensive end and got called for the foul. So there's something to be said with the psychology of that. And Landy's going to go have a seat as uh, Terrell Hicks returns. Boy, I'm looking at these stats. If these are correct, Lamar Harris is a 29% free throw shooter on the year. Well, you missed the first one there. He was 17 for 59. And he misses two, so perhaps they are. Not what they needed over in Spokane right now. They need to cut into that deficit. They had an opportunity, missed, and on the other end, extending the lead is Terrell Hicks. He gets his second bucket of the night, 47-29. Portland starting to distance themselves from the Sasquatch right now. Yeah, once again, dribble penetration. You might see uh, Spokane go back to that zone defense look. Gay getting into the lane, underhand, Euro step, misses the shot, it rolls around, had the look he wanted, just didn't get the finish. Coming down on the other end, Hicks taking it himself, finally tries to dish out, nice job getting the retrieve, there is Garrett, Garrett goes up, basket is good. And that was and a tough shot by Garrett, good scramble underneath, reached in with the left hand, picked the ball away from the defense, got the dribble and went up and laid it in. 49-29 right now. Portland in control. Again caused by dribble penetration. Gotell back into the game. We're in the number five. Again, a local product here right down the street. Gay puts the three up, misses it. Rebound comes down to Bosco. They're looking to hit the half century mark, and we still have 90 seconds left to play in the half. Yeah, Spokane just not being that patient on offense, making one pass and shooting. And some of the, the shots have been open, but they've been cold. So I think you're better off working the ball around, trying to get something attacking the rim. Garrett swings it over to Hicks. Ball's knocked out of bounds. That was Harris getting a hand on it. Shot clock at 10 with 116 to go. We invite everybody to stick around at halftime. We're going to interview a couple special guests. I should say a couple sets of special guests as members of, uh, we believe, Everett and North Idaho will come up and join us to help us preview their game coming up. That one starts scheduled to start rather around 8 o'clock tonight. The winner of that game will play the winner of this game next week in the semifinals. Jossie goes up, gets it to fall. I'll tell you what, Jossie stepping out and hitting the threes in that time. Ex block extended, worked his way back into the block. Had a little nice jump hook there. If you're a defender, what do you do with him right now? He hits threes, he gets down low, he can pop the mid-range. 14 points on the night. He is feeling it tonight, as they say. Pill May, floater from eight feet out, misses it, and they just cannot find the basket right now. As Spokane continues to struggle back on the other end. Portland getting into the lane. We get a whistle. And judging by the look on Isaiah Gotell's face, I have a feeling he might be getting called for the foul here. Yeah, and again, a lot of contact, and they might have let that go, but uh, the uh, flailing arm trying to go for the block as they're both sailing out of bounds. If he had maybe had avoided doing that, they might have let that go because uh, well, it was going to be a tough shot. Stepping to the line and hitting the first. It's number 32, Brendan Richard. Gets his first free throw of the night. Just 40 seconds to go in the half. Portland five for five at the free throw line. Spokane just ice cold here in this second. Uh, Even at the free throw, two for six from the free throw line for them, so they can't hit anything right now. And Richard gets the second one as well. 53-29. I do not think anybody was expecting this game to go down this way. Certainly we, uh, after seeing that these two teams played an eight-point game back on December 1st, Thought we might be in for a great battle tonight, and we still might be. There's a lot of basketball to be played, but if that's going to happen, Spokane needs to get going there. Shot is blocked by Jossie. Sandoval continues to barrel down low, misses it once again, goes up for a third attempt. This time he draws contact, and with 20.5 to go in the half, he'll head to the line. Well, give Sandoval credit for staying with it. Uh, initially what happened was Jossie was fronting him and forced Sandoval out a little bit, and he just simply bowled his way inside. Uh, got a couple of different shots off, stayed with it, and finally uh, he's at the free throw line, but a 
if Spokane is going to get back in this game, they're going to have to make <laughs> some free throws. They're going to have to make some free throws. They're going to have to make some shots in general. So. <laughs> Perhaps dunking is what they need to try next. It's about the only thing we haven't seen them attempt just quite yet. As Sandoval hits the second of the two. 53-30 game right now. I was dunking here a little earlier. I had some coffee and a donut. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I figured there was a punchline there because yeah. back in your day, maybe, probably. Probably, yeah. I do my best work below the rim. I weighed about half as well what I weigh right <laughs> now. Though. I, was at, I was at 160 when I played at Highline, and uh, I'm, I'm 200 plus now. You know, we're not going to put you in anytime soon. Fortunately, we've got you up here, and that's where we need you anyway. Three ball up in the air. Two seconds to go on the clock. Shot is missed. Oh. Tipping good. Give Gabe Garrett credit. He stuck with it, and he gets the Portland lead back to 25. It is a 55-30 game. It is all Panthers here in the first half. Mike, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get a couple interviews in, get you some stats, and ready to go for the second half. You're watching NWAC quarterfinal basketball on STSPN. Training is definitely making myself better, but I know that it's going to end up making my teammates better. You have to know your teammate and know what they need. The cohesion on the field and off the field is what makes everyone strong. Being on a team, you know it's not just you out there. I would do anything for the player next to me, behind me, in front of me. Practicing day in and day out, trying to be the best me so they can be the best them. It's like a sisterhood that you have with those girls. It's just really empowering. They're all doing crazy things. And you want to be like them and you want to push yourself like them. It motivates me to work harder, to get faster, quicker. Pushing each other so hard, all for the same goal. And then when you accomplish it, that's the best feeling in the world. Once you tap into that, I think you're unstoppable. And welcome back once again from the Walt Price Center here at Everett Community College. Our score at halftime, Portland leading Spokane 55-30. to The winner of this game will take on the winner of the next game, which involves North Idaho and these guys here. It's the, uh, the home team, if you will, the Everett Trojans. We've got Connor Moffitt and Gio Jackson with us right now. Guys, you're playing on your home court in this tournament. Gio, what's that been like for you guys so far? Are you, you enjoying the fact that you didn't have to travel to, to do that this uh, year? Yeah, it's definitely, we got an advantage in that. So, you know, we appreciate, you know, all the people that come out. So, that's definitely an advantage in, this, in this type of tournament. Connor, can it be an advantage but also a curse, too? Do you have a, have a few more folks that are maybe targeting you guys, knowing yeah, that they yeah. want to knock off the hometown team? Definitely, definitely. They they come in, they know it's our hometown, so they want to show us up on our home court. we going to get the best shot. So here we go. You guys are trying to get to the semifinals tonight, a big uh, step in the direction for, for the Trojans. And, Gio, a uh, team that hasn't been here this that, that often in the past, what is it about this year's team that's been a little different maybe from what we've seen from the Trojans before? Um, I feel like this year we just play for each other. Like we don't care who scores 30, we don't care who scores 40. You know, we don't we don't care. We just want to win. We go out and play for each other. And you've got an interesting stat line. I think you're in the top 10 in the NWAC in rebounds and assists. Did I see that right? Yes, sir. I don't. You don't see that very often. That's a, that's an interesting stat. Especially, for, especially yeah. for a height like that. Well, tell me about this guy a little bit and what he brings to the table for you guys. I mean, he he's our handler. He he comes in. I mean, honestly, I feel weird when he's off the floor. I, we need him on the floor at all times. He helps us stay comfortable and. He helps us get us going. And Gio, tell me about Connor. Oh, that man. This man's crazy. <laughs> and he's our motor. You know, when he gets going, we all get going. Like, if he's down, we're down. We just need him. When he's up, we're up. That's, we, that's it. we got the rubber game coming up tonight. You played these guys twice already this year. You won one. They won one. Yep. What do you need to do to get this victory tonight? Oh, get stops oh. down the stretch, for sure. We need stops down the stretch. It's all it's all defense. Um, we're going to score the ball. We, we got scores. We just got to stop the stop them. Gio, give me another key to this game tonight at 8 uh, o'clock. We got a rebound. Rebound is big. In fact, they're bigger than us. You know, I don't think they're stronger than us, but we are, I feel like we are mentally tougher than them, though. Last uh, question. Home court. We going to have a big crowd tonight? 
Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You telling folks yeah. to get out here? Yes. Definitely. GL, you're from Federal Way. You got some folks coming up from, from Eagle uh, Country? I should be, yeah. You know, it, it costs a lot to get in here, but, you know, they're going to try to get up in here. <laughs> we'll see if they pay it tonight. If not, they might be watching us, so that's yeah, even better yeah. for us. So, GL, Connor, thank you for coming thank up here. You. Best of luck to you guys tonight as you take on North Idaho. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get you a couple more interviews and get you ready for action in the second half. You're watching STSPN. Red Lion Hotels Corporation is built to thrive. With innovative programming and in-the-know staff, our hotel brands offer guests great stays and a chance to immerse in local culture. Red Lion Hotels and Red Lion Inn and Suites are better than ever. For travelers who want to get lost, and discover adventure, we open the door to the best local experiences. We have reinvented the loyalty program. Introducing Hello Rewards, the first recognition-based loyalty program that encourages members to go further, fly higher, travel better, with tailor-made rewards. And we're not stopping yet. Presenting Hotel RL, our newest hotel brand. Inspired by the natural beauty of the Pacific Northwest, an uplifting, relaxed atmosphere, a staff that loves what they do. For adventurers at heart, Hotel RL will inspire an amazing journey. Our future has never been brighter. Three strong brands, an expanding portfolio, industry-leading innovation with turnkey solutions, simple fee structures, areas of protection, continued support from day one. We make partnerships easy. Reach a new breed of traveler with RLHC. <laughs> and welcome back once again. It is halftime here at the Walt Price Fitness Center. Portland leading Spokane 55 to 30, and we continue to get you ready for the second game of our doubleheader here tonight. And with us right now from the North Idaho Cardinals, we've got Ashanti Potts Woods and Seth Christians. And guys, I'm going to ask you the same question we just asked the uh, the Trojan players. You guys split during the uh, the regular season, one game each. Uh, Ashanti, what do you guys need to do to get this victory tonight? Uh, we just need to play a full 40 minutes of defense, and uh, that should do the job, honestly. Seth, 40 minutes. do you feel the same way? Yeah, just lock up, keep them in front of us, don't let them get to the basket. Talk to me about the, uh, it's easy to ask you guys about when you defeated them, talk about the loss a little bit. What maybe didn't you guys do that night? Is it so along the same lines of what you were just talking about? Or uh, Yeah, we used, earlier in the year we had a lot of a lot of laps, defensive laps, so we've worked on that, got better at it, so as long as we play a full 40 minutes, that should help. When you're playing a team that is hosting a tournament and you know they're going to have the home crowd behind you, does that get you guys just that much more fired up, Seth, when you come into a game like that? Oh, do, you, yeah. do you like to be the spoiler knowing that they're, uh, the crowd is going to be against you more or less tonight? I, I like having a crowd against us. It gets the place loud when you're when you're doing good, yeah. And uh, what would it mean for you guys to be able to come back here next week and get into the semifinals? Uh, it would mean it's championship time. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what the ultimate goal is, right? Yeah, of course. Hey, Seth, tell me a little bit about Ashanti. What uh, what does he bring to the table here for the Cardinals? Oh, he's a shooter for sure. I mean, he can cash out from anywhere out there. I mean, get to the basket too. A little bit of everything with Ashanti. And uh, Ashanti, tell me a little bit about Seth. Give me a scouting report on what we're going to see from him tonight. Um, Seth comes in and he helps rebound a lot, and he gets a lot of offensive rebounds and putbacks. So that's one thing that helps us a lot. And those are two things you could definitely use tonight. So again, these guys playing immediately following this game will probably sign off for about 15 minutes and come back out. So Ashanti, uh, Seth, thank you very much for coming up tonight. Best of luck to you guys, and hopefully, if everything goes well, you'll uh, be back here next week. Yep. Yep. All right, take care. We're going to hey, take a quick break right now. When we come back. We'll get you ready for second half action. You're watching STSPN. Historic. Unique. Exciting. As challenges continue to test the mettle of Americans, your community has to depend on willing citizens just like you to answer the call and respond to local disasters and other times of crisis. You may be surprised to find out who we are and what we do. In fact, it could actually be your story too. The Air National Guard. From the arrival of the first colonies in the New World until today, communities across America have depended on their own local patriotic citizens to be available for extraordinary challenges as a part-time militia guard. 
For over 300 years, they have been in every war and rushed to the scene of every natural disaster. At the turn of the 20th century, when airplanes were used for various military needs, the state National Guard units flew for domestic use as well as preparing for wartime needs. December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. It soon became clear that the professional use of aircraft was very important to the United States. After World War II, Congress created the United States Air Force and transformed the aviation units at local guard units into the Air National Guard. Now, in more than 130 communities across the United States, the Air National Guard covers a wide variety of jobs, nearly 200 part-time and full-time career opportunities. Each location can host any number of unique missions, and each one of these missions includes many exciting jobs waiting for you to master. As our name suggests, air means you could be involved with aviation efforts, including space and cyberspace, volunteering for both state and federal needs. An excellent example is the Combat Air Patrol mission. The units assigned to this vital mission have fighters that are on alert, ready to scramble at a moment's notice, protecting local communities from aircraft entering unauthorized airspace. But not just pilots are involved, Munition specialists, aircraft mechanics, and airfield operations specialists are needed to keep these missions flying. Nowadays, everything is very high quality electronics and very digitized. So what I do is I maintain and make sure these F-16s have the correct components, have the highest upgraded digital systems installed. In recent years, through remote technologies, serving overseas may actually take place at your local Air Guard unit. You could be protecting ground troops overseas or carrying out other missions through remote piloted aircraft and space satellite operations. As a part of the elite battlefield airmen units, you could be selected and trained to operate alongside all other special operations forces. With your rigorous training and exceptional talents, you could be expected to go beyond the front lines, identifying enemy targets, protecting troop movements against ambushes, and rescuing military and civilian personnel trapped behind enemy lines. The Air Guard also has several units where medics are trained and involved in aeromedical evacuation, a specialized flying triage mission, stabilizing and protecting military members and civilians injured during any number of conflicts or natural disasters. And since all of these operations occur in the air, a variety of weather specialists from traditional weather forecasting all the way to battlefield weather specialists are needed to ensure operations are conducted safely and successfully. We are the Air National Guard, and national means that you will be serving our local communities and states by responding to the needs of your state's governor as well as national interests. We have the unique honor of being on the front lines of protecting and responding to the American homeland and its needs. You will be challenged and tested using the skills you learned in the Air National Guard to respond to emergencies from local flooding relief to attacks here in the United States. As a battlefield airman at home, direct rescue operations to fellow Americans in distress is a duty that you are proud to carry out, as they rely on your quick thinking and extensive training to return them to their loved ones safely. Or you could be on the front line using your extensive medical training to triage your neighbors and help transport them across the country to hospitals in our Homeland Response Force. I fly on an H-860 Pavewalk helicopter as an engineer. I can end the, the answer there and it would be pretty cool. Flying is awesome. Uh, on top of it, our mission is rescue, which is, in my humble opinion, there is no better mission than putting your life on the line for somebody else. A Red Horse and engineering units can use your dedication to do everything from clearing the way for emergency routes, rescuing people in buildings, and rebuilding runways to keep the rescue efforts moving. You could also be a vital link to essential services as you assist in the logistics, coordination, and direct distribution of food, shelter, and basic necessities to emergency workers and victims as a part of our services teams. And guard means you will be a member of an elite and historic family, dedicated to not only living and working in your local community, but also defending and protecting it. 
For only one weekend a month and two weeks a year, you will be trained on the latest techniques and technologies to ensure you're ready to respond when needed. Imagine being part of one of our rescue units, rushing to the scene in treacherous conditions, ready to save lives both in the United States and abroad. Or using your highly skilled technical training in one of our network warfare squadrons, providing and protecting our nation's communications infrastructure and learning the skills so highly regarded by companies worldwide. And in some locations, you could no, actually... Okay. Welcome once again from the Walt Price Center here on the campus of Everett Community College. It is all Portland so far in this game as they lead Spokane 55-30. to 30. Mike Buckholtz, you, uh, you got your paws on a stat sheet. What are some of the things that stand out here in the first half? Basically, there's only one thing that I have to look at on the stat sheet, and that is overall shooting percentage. Portland with 55 points, shooting 55% from the field. Spokane, 30 points, through shooting 50 Thirty percent from the field. That, that's <laughs> that's the story of the first half. That's almost lottery ticket like, isn't it? What, what are the odds of that? You you get your your point total and your shooting percentage one and the same for both teams. The thing that I thought was interesting here, Portland has hit five three pointers in the first half. Spokane hit four. Out of 34 teams in the NWAC, Spokane hit the second most three-pointers this season. Portland was 29th out of 34, and yet here they are out shooting them. I have a feeling we're going to see the three ball start flying for the Sasquatch. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. If uh, Spokane only has four three-pointers here in the second half, it won't be for a lack of trying. They are down <laughs> 25, and they spent the entire time warming up with three-point shots. Of course, as soon as we say that, they go down low and yet miss again. Sandoval who is now 3 of 12 from the field, their leading scorer average in 19 a game. That's not what you want, especially if Bosco drains one, and that's exactly what he did. 13 points for him tonight. KJ feeling it, and so are the Panthers. 28-point lead. KJ already above his average, 12 point, uh, I think it's 7. And he's already got 13 tonight. We've just sent away in the second half. Uh, he better get a few more points quickly if he wants to expand on that average because the way things are going, he may not play a lot in the later part of the game, especially if they can keep building that lead out. Well, if you're hot and it's the playoffs, the coach will leave you in. You have the 40-point rule at some point, right? As, there we go. Gay hitting a three ball, his first field goal of the night. Gay averaging 13.6 on the year and just has the one field goal. He comes up with a steal. Steele looking to possibly pass ahead. We mentioned he's a top tenner as far as assist in the NWAC over the course of the year. Sandoval got the open look three, missed it. A couple of players almost fighting for the ball there initially for Portland. Finally, Rutherford able to save it before it goes out of bounds. And Frank Norman says, you know what? We've got the 25-point lead. Let's slow things up a bit and set the offense. The Sandoval now three for 13 from the field. Definitely going to need a little more protection from him. Driving baseline, left side, and getting it to fall. That's Brendan Richard. No help side defense whatsoever. Went by his defender off the dribble one-on-one -on -one and laid it in. 60-33. Portland already up by 27 and might be looking for more as that ball goes over the head of Sandoval and out of bounds. Panther basketball. And one of the things uh, when I was teaching high school that we studied uh, in psychology was reading body language, and you can kind of see the wind just out of the sails right now of the Spokane Sasquatch, whereas uh, Portland looks like they're uh, feeling quite confident right now. Norman doing a nice job of getting the ball to Garrett. A little pump fake in midair there. I think that might have thrown off his shot just a bit. He misses it. Spokane down on the other end. Post move, hook shot blocked. It's Bosco with the ricochet, goes out to Gay. He tries another three. A lot of contact there as a body hits the floor, and that's number 20, K.J. Bosco, going to the ground, and we're going to get a foul called against Spokane. I'll tell you what, K.J. Bosco and Lane uh, Josie in that first half really tag-teamed the uh, Spokane Sasquatch as they combined for, I want to say 20 points here, but no, it was... Yeah, I think it was 20 points. Pilme picking up his third foul on the night, so he's down to two more to go here. Not exactly a player they want in foul trouble when they're trying to get back into this ball game. See if that changes the way number 15 plays defense at all. Well, they're going to have to get some defensive stops because if they don't, they're not. doesn't matter how well they shoot, they're not going to get back in. They've dug a huge hole here. Norman kicks that one out. Garrett 
Sandoval gets his hands on it. Pushing it ahead, trying to cut into that 27 point deficit. Gay getting the ball down to the side, blocked. Partially blocked anyway, Gabe Garrett got his hand on it. That and was Blocked it Pacutis. in the hand that was not carrying the headband as he got his, head, <laughs> he got his headband knocked off on that last drive to the hoop and he picked that up and came back and hustled down the floor and got that block. Something that doesn't show up in the stat line but you certainly get style points for that and he uh, does get a block shot to boot, so nicely done. Sandoval out on the wing once again. Pilme waving his hands as if to say, get the ball to me, I'm ready. Nice job, little step underneath, lays it up on the right-hand side. Yeah, good patience there, and it exploded around the defender when he had to and kissed it off the glass. Nice move there. Pilme with 11. Sandoval getting the block on the other end as he takes Frank Norman's shot and spits it out of bounds. 16.50 no to go in the Norman half. went into him, uh, into the body to try try to create a little space. Frank Norman at 5'11", and Sandoval at 6'6", six, six, and believe it or not, he didn't create any space. He's had a <laughs> shot block. So. He's 6'6", six, six, and he's also wide. Not an easy task when you're 5'11", and you're going right at him, but give Norman a lot of credit for trying. Open three, look. Hits off the front iron. Sandoval grabs the rebound. Shot was put up by Ritzard, and here they come. They get the ball right back. Yeah, microcosm as Spokane gets the ball back, and through the outlet pass to a player who was uh, cutting away. Richard, nice move, misses the shot. Johnny on the spot. Cameron Rutherford there to pick him up and lay it back in there. He now has eight points on the night. And Spokane just stood and watched that. They had an opportunity to go crash the boards. Their body language right now is they, uh, they are looking defeated already. Well, you don't want to say they're conceding anything yet, but certainly by the Lack of effort we saw there on the defensive side of things. It's starting to feel that way. Sandoval trying to keep him in the game. He gets the little turnaround move, and we get a timeout. We'll take a quick break. 16.02 left. You're watching STSPN. Celebrating 50 years of possibilities realized, Pierce College is here to guide you to student success. With more than 60 programs of study at Pierce College, there's a fit for you, your life, and your schedule, including short-term certificate programs, transfer degrees, and even baccalaureate degrees. Pierce provides flexibility and flexible degree options to help you on your path. Your pathway is clear at Pierce College. Okay, I'm going to stump you now. What county is Pierce College in? Boy, and I was just down there. It's in Pierce County. Dang it. <laughs> thought I, I, was, I thought maybe there was a trick question in here. When you first asked it, I'm like, well, that seems so obvious, but maybe he's got something. I don't know. Uh, I tried to make it sound like a trick question. You, uh, and you almost I, succeeded. I, was, I can't fool you. you. Well, you can, but just not that particular time. You know who else has a clear pathway? Not only is your pathway clear at Pierce College, Portland's pathway seems to be getting more and more clear to the semis. I like the timeout, though, by uh, uh, Jeremy Groth. Uh, Spokane just, uh, you know, had a little uh, the wind out of their sails, and he waited until something good happened and called the timeout. Oh, and there's the dunk! First one of the night. Throwdown right there. And he comes out in a full-court press out of the timeout to see if he can change things, and things did change. It wasn't a three, it was a dunk. Norman doing a nice job of getting the ball to Rutherford, and he threw that one down with authority. Portland with the rebound, and so far, no good on that timeout. Portland already with two points and looking for more right now. And Lane Josie checking in, and he had a great first half, came down with that rebound. Josie guarded by Gotell, looking for... Garrett down low. Garrett, nice little move into the lane. Pops it up. Gets it to fall. Portland by 29. Well, Garrett averaging 24 point, or 20 points a game, and he's 6'4", but he, he is tough down there on the post. He gets low, calls for the ball. Good patience down there. Gay pops from 14 feet out. His second field goal here in the half. And he now has six points on the or Give him seven points. We're showing up on the board right now. And Gay certainly one of the leading scorers 
he will need to uh, catch on fire here if they have any hope of trying to make this game respectable at mm -hmm. all. Nice job working the ball around. They got the look they wanted, just couldn't get it to fall. That was Gabe Garrett in the corner for three. Once again, Gay with the basketball up on top. Can't, can't get them all back on one play, correct? Gay, right side, kicks it back out. Pilme, going to get a whistle there. And last time he made that up fake and dribbled to the basket by he. We're talking about uh, Pil Pilmai. Uh, he got called for the travel. Better job that time of keeping his pivot foot. Josie gets called for the second foul. We'll take yet another break. You're watching STSPN. I am strong. I won't give up. I put my heart into the game. I learned from my mistakes. Focus. Determination. Confidence. I trust my gut. No limits. Preparation. Dedication. Leadership. I want to make my team and family proud. Be an inspiration for other girls who like sports. Join, Join the movement. G off eight. Jet City Roller Derby brings the sport of roller derby to Snohomish County. Tickets for Jet City's 11th season are now available with doubleheader bouts at Edmonds Community College. Featuring a family-friendly environment and a beer garden, find a skater hand out, handing out flyers to receive a discount off entry to the next bout. Mike, fun for the entire family. Bring the kids, have a little fun, send them off in one direction, go to the beer garden in the other, and... Watch some roller derby. My kids won't be going, but I talked to my wife, Maggie, who's in Texas visiting the grandkids and told her about the roller derby, and she said, really, let's go. There we go. So, so we, we're going to go. The ads work not only for the folks out there watching, but those of us up here as well. I think Maggie will, will mind if you have an and one. Can I go with you? No, we're, we're happy having a third wheel. <laughs> there we, go. We, might, we might have to look into that. <laughs> okay. But first, we're going to get back to this action here. Portland continuing to lead Spokane, 66-39. And perhaps uh, Spokane could use some, some roller blades right now to get up and down the court quicker. They need to get something going on. They are down by 27 with 14.37 left here in the half. And we talked about it before. This is a Spokane team that usually likes to live and die out by the three-point line. And we haven't seen that that much yet. And Gotell has that one go right through his hands. Is able to save it. Tries to kick it to Pilme. And fortunately throws it to the wrong team. Coming down the other way. Ball goes up and in. Nice pass from Terrell Hicks over to Gabe Garrett. He lays it in for the easy bucket. And if I were Portland, I would continue to try to get the ball to Garrett down inside on the block and work that as the three ball goes in for Spokane. There's the three they needed. Ryan Alexander with his second tray of the night. He now has six and wasting very little time is Cameron Rutherford on the other end. And if you are Portland right now, you'll trade some threes for twos. You got the 28-point lead, so why not? If they're going to leave you that wide open, why waste time? Just... Go ahead and put it down and get more points. Go tell with the open look three off the back iron. Josie initially tries to grab it, kicks it ahead to Richard. We're going to get a whistle here. Yeah, grab just before they got to half court. Uh, Spokane has been unable to slow down the fast break and went to the strategy of fouling before they even cross half court to try to slow him down a little bit. And Go tell still looking for his first points of the night. I would Again, a Snohomish County player. He had a 52-point game back in high school his senior year. 52 points away from that right now tonight. I'd be looking to go in back inside to their leading scorer, and he has a ball on the block right now. Garrett pops it up. Double team counted. Mike Buckholtz, the coach, called that one. They go to Garrett. Garrett puts it in, and he's going to go to the line for the end one. Well, it's just logical because he's such a force down there, and if you're going to stop him, what that means is you're going to have to run a second defender at uh, at Garrett down there, and he's also very unselfish and finds the open man and kicks it back out and reposts. So it's, uh, it's only logical from a coaching point of view that you want to get him the ball. And they're going to get the offensive board off the missed free throw by Garrett. Hicks, baseline, good. Four-point play, and this game continues to get more and more out of hand. A 32-point lead. Hicks bringing some quickness and energy to both ends of the floor for the Portland Panthers. Gabe Garrett not wanting to rest on his laurels. He got out there quickly, tried to get the steal, did not. Gay misses the three ball. Hicks grabs the rebound. Here comes Portland one more time, and 
That pass just sailed over the head of Rutherford out of bounds. Turnover back to Spokane. Yeah, a little over his head. He's 6'8". If he would have been 7'8", he might have been able to get it. May have had a chance, right? Yeah. If you're Portland, hey, 32-point lead, you can take a few risks here and there. And certainly if you see a guy open down there, why not? They had, didn't get here by playing conservative yet. They're not going to start quite yet as Gay has the ball out on the wing, kicks it over to Harris. Well, you don't need to be conservative, but uh, you certainly want to be efficient with what you're trying to do there instead of having the ball for a nanosecond before you turn it over. Had the right idea there, looking for the back door. Alexander saw Gay cutting, just threw it out a little too far ahead of him, and the turnover once again goes back to Portland. And if you're the Sasquatch, that is exactly what you didn't want. And that's basically been a microcosm of their game so far, is that when you get cutters open and shooters open and they are unable to convert and or make the shot consistently so far, shooting just 30% in the first half. Four out and one in, trying to get the ball inside again, and there he is. Nice reverse, Rutherford misses it, Josie trying to keep it alive, bats it over to Rutherford, gets the basket. Nice teamwork and nice hustle. Portland's still playing as though they're down. The team that has the 34-point lead certainly leaving it all out on the court still. Well, when things are going your way, it's it's uh, a lot easier to play with a lot of enthusiasm than uh, when you're down 30. Delgado missing that shot. Back on the other end, Rutherford, three ball. Back iron bounces way into the air where Cameron Gay is able to track it down and grab it. Now down under 12 minutes to go here. Gay into the lane, tries to float one over the head of Josie. He gets his hand on it, tips it outside. Three ball up in the air, missed. That was Alexander. Yeah, Gay probably should have shot that, trying to be a little bit too unselfish, right idea, but uh, too short of a pass to make inside, jumping in the air to pass. Portland has not been in the semifinals since winning the championship four years ago. Josie kicking it over to Morales, who is now back in the game. Spokane trying Ooh. to pick up the pressure and the uh, intensity on the defense. Lamar Harris with the throw down. A nice interception from him. Nothing but open space in front of him. And he says, you know what? Why take a chance? Just throw this one down. Hand into the cylinder. Two-point basket. Makes it a 76-44 game. Rutherford floater from 10 feet out. Hits it. Nice That's job. Playing against the man-to-man, -man. still four out and one in. This time it was Rutherford's opportunity to post up, and uh, he finishes. He's got five field goals in the half, 16 points on the night for number 30. Good scoring balance for Portland. Indeed, and a lot of points to, to go along with the, uh, the rest of their game. 78 points here, and we're not even at the 10-minute mark here in the second half. Gay, 10 feet out, floater, hits it. Yeah, got into the paint in that time, uh, just pulled up and uh, hit the jump shot. Trying to get some uh, respectability back here for the Spokane Sasquatch. Gay playing hard. Nice floater there. Rutherford misses the shot. Ball comes down. Ryan Alexander grabs it. Kicking it ahead once again. We're now down at the 10-10 mark. Gay three ball up in the air. Grabbed by Morales. They've got numbers three on two. Nice spin move. Floater off the glass. Rolls in and out. Alexander once again grabbing another rebound. This is starting to look like an end one game. Both teams just flying up and down the floor, and yet we don't see any points as another pass sails out of bounds. Portland basketball once again. Got a whole host of subs coming in right now, but a timeout before that occurs. So, so we'll take another quick break. Portland by 32. You are watching NWAC quarterfinal basketball on STSPN. I'm Danny Horton, and I'm an STCU member. The windstorm of 2015, who doesn't remember that? It had no power for the heaters. The horse trough was a 600 pound block of ice. STCU stepped up. I went straight down. I got the loan I needed. But had been for STCU, the ability to provide everything I needed, where would I have been? I'm Danny Horton, and STCU is here for good. There is no obstacle an engineer can't tackle, build around, or blow up. Skilled and versatile, these soldiers pave the way, building fortifications, detecting and destroying mines, or restoring electricity after a natural disaster. Nothing stands in the way of a guard engineer.
Folks, be sure to check out the NWAC on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for all the latest NWAC news. Also visit nwacsports.org for the most recent information on schedules, scores, stats, and more. Some of the stats and scores you'll get are from this game right here. And right now, that is favors Portland, 78-46. This team is now apparently 9 minutes and 56 seconds away from coming back next week. They get to go home for a, a few days and then be right back here again. That game is going to take place, by the way, Mike, at 4 p.m. next Saturday night. The winner of this game taking on the winner of tonight's final game, which is coming up after ours, Everett, the host school, versus North Idaho. Morales, 16-footer, misses. Getting some new players in there right now. Nice rebound by number 40. That's Zane Hewitt getting his first action of the night. And once again, three Sasquatch around the basket, and Zane Hewitt kind of standing off to the side, and the ball bounced right to him for the rebound. Everything Hewitt. going the way of the Portland squad. Hewitt, a, uh, went, hailing from the same high school as Richard. We get a three ball there, finally. Spakudis. <laughs> Able to get the uh, the scoring drought ended here and getting the deficit down just a little bit anyway. 29-point lead for Portland, 9.06 to go. And Pakudas averages almost 14 a game, so he obviously has some shooting ability. Josie uses that iron once again and uses the backboard perfectly. His first points of the second half. Well, he was posted up on the two block and got pushed out about a, uh, half a step away from that and still hit the jump hook, so... Obviously, things going the way of the Panthers. Michael Landy, number 22, also checked in during the last timeout. A couple of looks there for the Sasquatch. One open look shot, another was a tip back. Both missed. Portland once again with the basketball. Terrell Hicks, very content, letting a little bit of that clock tick off, looking for the play they want. Landy now taking it over to the right side. Hewitt, double team, goes baseline, gets by the defenders. Had the look, just couldn't finish. Would have been nice to get it up on the board. Tried to finger roll over the rim from the baseline. That's tough to do. He's looking for his first points of the night and didn't get them. Ball gets knocked out of bounds, and we're going to get a couple more subs. Get Jacob Powell checking into the game for the first time for Portland. Six foot one sophomore from La Grande, Oregon. Also checking back into the game for the Sasquatch, George Pilmay. Nice move there. Little ankle roller, if you will. Juking out the defender. Missing the shot, however. That was number one, Lamar Harris. And we're going to get a whistle. Offensive foul called. Nice job by Cameron Gay to get over in front of the lightning quick Terrell Hicks and draw the contact as Hicks lowered his shoulder going down the lane. Hicks having a good game, though. Doing a good job of... Pushing the tempo and controlling tempo, finding his open teammates. I think when Portland goes back and watches this game, they're going to like a lot of what they see. That may not be one of them right there, though. Yeah. gets right into the lane. Easy basket for him. Open lane layup, 60-51. 7.40 to go here. Right. Hicks, Hicks with what we call the matador defense, which is just move out of the way as the person with the ball drove right by him and laid it in. Josie kicks it back out. Two different players in the vicinity. I'm not sure either one knew who it was going to, and consequently the ball goes into the backcourt as Jacob Powell tried to retrieve it, but to no avail. And that happens a lot of times when you get uh, three or four subs in off the bench and they've been uh, you know, out of the game. It takes them a little while to get acclimated to what's going on out there. And Still up by 29. 29, and Spokane is hoping to get that down even a little more. Nice job, Gay. Finding the open look, gets it ahead to Lamar Harris. Dribbles underneath the basket, lays it up and in. He now has eight points tonight. And Gay, you know, he has some height. He's a 6'4", he's 6'4", playing the point guard out there. And a good passer, good shooter. And Josie would want that one back again. He had the look. Ball goes out of bounds. Back on over to Spokane. We're now down at the seven minute mark even. Cameron Gay, fundamentally sound. Yeah, and that's what you want in a point guard, right? And you want, I mean, a point guard who's, Without you question. you've got some height, he can shoot the ball, he's shown that. He's one of the league leaders in assists. Well, when you're the wing player, you want to know what the point guard is going to do. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, uh, it certainly changes things when uh, if you get somebody who's uh, helter-skelter out there. Nice high screen roll. He's going to go inside to his teammate now on the post up and 
<laughs> and if Pilme gets points for hitting the shot clock, he would have uh, succeeded there as he just popped that one up, backing his defender down. Does draw contact, and I believe he's going to go to the line on that one too. Well, Nicely done. Was, yeah, it was well done. I mean, he was, uh, had the contact. The whistle hadn't went up, so threw the ball up there and hoped to get the whistle, and he got it. Indeed he did. Pilmay's first shot. And Pilmay has uh, worked hard posting up as well and also hit, uh, stepping out and hitting a couple of threes early in the first half. Those have been few and far between for Spokane here in the second half, but he hits a pair. 88% free throw shooter on the year. So about what you'd expect there. 80-54 score. Portland holding on to that large lead right now, looking for more, almost getting stolen there. Nice, oh, I was going to say nice underneath pass, pass there to Josie. Batted away at the last second. That was number 20. Looking to uh, to get it into his teammate. And that was good defense because uh, the post defender on the weak side came over to help and the wing dropped back and got into the passing lane. So helping the helper. Oh, KJ Bosco, oh, and boy, my. he just took a shot. Lamar Harris just ran over <laughs> Bosco and immediately a couple of his teammates over there to check on him. He he took a pop there. I'm not sure that Harris actually saw him. I don't think he, he did go either. Going for the pass. And I don't think there was anything blatant about that. I think he just happened to be in the... Uh, the path of where he was traveling, and that was not the place he wanted to be. There we have some roller derby. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Who needs the skates when you've got the uh, the hardwood right there? Good job by Bosco to shake it off. He's going to stay in the game. Looking for Josie, but he's being double teamed right now. Bosco says, I'm going to find you anyway. Nice cutter through the lane, up and in. <laughs> Jacob Powell getting on the board for the first time this evening. I'll tell you what, Josie was definitely a positive factor for Portland coming in. Scoring, passing, playing uh, excellent defense on the post player and ripping down boards. There's another board for him right there. And as if on cue, he played nice defense on that play too. It forced Pilme into a contested shot. He misses it, then he goes right up and just grabs the board with one hand. Hey, you got a guy who's 6'8 that can come in off the bench and do the things that he does. That's, uh, that's a positive contribution right there. Jacob Powell. Feeling it after that last bucket. This time he misses the shot. Kicking it ahead. Pill May. Thought about the layup. Thought about the dunk, I should say. And Hicks blocks it. Coming in from behind. Nicely done. Everything going Portland's way thus far tonight. Hewitt, three ball. Hits it. Zane Hewitt with his first points. 85-54. And Hicks with that energy. I was looking. Hicks is listed at 6-3. And he is a quick young man out there. He's got quick feet and obviously good timing. Pakudis, floater, hits the bucket, and then he gets his second field goal of the half, eight points on the night. And we have a player at the scorer's table waiting to check in and kind of waiting for the clock to stop, but the defense has not been all that intense right now with the game more or less decided with the score. So That's Cameron Gay over there waiting to come back in for the Sasquatch. Looks as though that might be Michael Landy checking back in for the Panthers. Driving to the hoop with authority. Ball just rolling off the rim. Lamar Harris, if the rim was just about a centimeter wider, he would have had a bucket there. Fakes Harris up in the air, gets it to get the open look. That was number 20 with a shot. Bosco back on the other end. Numbers and layup. Pakudis. Nice re rebound and outlet that time by Mesoropian. Pakudis now with 10 points, and we're going to get yet another timeout. Portland by 27, 413 left in the game. You're watching quarterfinal basketball on STSPN. We know you're more, more than a number, more than living paycheck to paycheck. You're a multitasking life engineer full of experience. That's why you belong here, where you'll find more one-on-one -on -one attention from faculty, 
with programs that can lead to in-demand jobs and the support you need to get where you want to go, all at an affordable price. Get started now. Edmonds Community College, edcc.edu. 10 and... And welcome back once again to the Walt Price Center here at Everett Community College. Steve Willits with Mike Buckholtz. And, Mike, you and I were just talking about it at the break. When things start to go downhill for teams, you often see the snowball effect, the feeling the pressure, trying a little too hard almost to, uh, to overcompensate, and this is what you get, right? And, and it's frustrating. You have, you have players that are shooting and missing and getting the rebound and shooting and missing. They get another rebound and miss. And then you go down to the other end, and the opponent makes one pass and busts a three. You know, it becomes disheartening as the lead continues to grow, getting into double figures, and after a while, the game is gone. Hewitt thought about the three, passes it up. Terrell Hicks won't pass it up. He hits his first tray of the night, 88-58. If you're just tuning in, Spokane jumping out to a 9-2 lead in the first half. Game was close for a while, about midway through the half, and then all of a sudden, Portland exploded. They led 55-30 at the break, and... Haven't taken their foot off the gas pedal since as Pilmay's going to go to the line and shoot two more. Yeah, Portland making some defensive changes as a lot of the offense for Spokane is was ran through their post player, Cesar Sandoval, and uh, he's tough down on the block and was getting some opportunities early on. They started fronting him and double teaming him down there, trying to get him off the block and making tough shots. and. Uh, I think he made three out of his first uh, four or five and ended up being about three for 13 early in the second half, and things got away from Spokane. Bill May certainly having himself a nice night offensively. He has 14 points and is five of five from the free throw line. Trying to keep his team in this game at some level there as Hewitt puts up another three, this time in the left corner. Ball goes out of bounds, and it's going to go back over to Portland. And there's the microcosm of the game again. <laughs> Ryan Alexander gets to the weak side, blocks out, beats his uh, player to the ball, and it's all the way on the sideline, and he touches it as it goes on the sideline, and it's back to Portland. It's just one of those nights if you're a Sasquatch fan. Portland once again with the basketball. 323 showing on that clock. And that bus ride home to South on I-5 back down to Portland is going to be a lot nicer after this one's all said and done. Three ball up in the air, missed. That was Bosco with another attempt. Cameron Gay out to Pilmay, open look three, hits it. And Gay might be a little bit shaken up on there, a little. They're going to stop and check him out. He says he's okay, but... Uh... Seems though he's almost holding his mouth or his nose a little bit there too as he's trying to shake it off. Yeah, maybe got popped as he drove into traffic there. So Give Spokane a lot of credit. They're trying to put up a little bit of a fight here. They're not going to just give this game to Portland without fighting through the entire 40-minute period, it looks as yeah, if Isaac, that's the case anyway. Isaiah Gotel reaching from behind the defender. That's pretty much an automatic call right there as, as Portland trying to get the ball inside. Yeah, an easy call at that as... Portland looking for more points. 17-foot floater by Bosco. High up into the air. Hewitt came flying in to try to grab it to no avail. Sandoval coming away with it. Gay right back into the lane. Nice no look to Gotel. Down low. Bucket is good. The local product getting his first field goal of the night. 88-65. And Gotel's a freshman. So going to have another shot at it as he rips the board down. Another shot at it next year. Hewitt missing that shot. Cameron Gay on the other end. Ball bounces off the iron into the hands of the waiting Hewitt. 204 left. All that's left now for Portland is for that clock to hit triple zeros, and they will be on their way to getting ready for next week's game right back here at the Walt Price Center. Again, 4 p.m. start time. They're going to play the winner of the Everett North Idaho game. Pilmay using the bank shot that time, or trying to anyway. Ball misses. And you can tell that the uh, intensity has wound down here a little bit as, uh, you know, players able to more or less freely get off shots and uh, get a little one-on-one -on -one action, a little rec ball action going here at the end. Jacob Powell making the bucket, and 
Coach Groth still coaching his Sasquatch. He wants a timeout. We'll, uh, we'll take another quick break. You're watching SDSBN. Quick time out there on the floor, mainly to get some substitutions in as most of the starters are now on the bench. Spokane, a few of the players over there congratulating one another on a successful season. A few players walking over to the front end of the bench. And again, nothing to be ashamed of. This team had a very nice year. They're going to finish the year with 22 victories. A team that won the championship just two years ago. Long three ball up, back iron. Shoots off and rebounded by Hicks. That was Lamar Harris with the shot. And Terrell Hicks still in, going to continue to run the offense as we have some subs in the game. Gets it to Hewitt. Hewitt high off the glass, misses it. <laughs> nice job there is. <laughs> K.J. Bosco says, hey, if I'm going to stay in the game, I might as well play a little bit. Well, he was standing there as the rebound came down to Mezzaropian, and he went to put the ball over his head and throw it, and... Bosco just flipped it out of his hands kind of nonchalantly there. There's a roping over to Pacutis. He misses off the front iron. Ball bounces around. Finally retrieved by Harris. Trying to go cross court. Is able to uh, get that ball over to Delgado. He misses the open look three. And once again, Bosco going up. Sky, and this time to get the rebound. Shot clock is off. 21 seconds left. Why not another three ball? <laughs> Jacob Powell says, hey, I don't have one yet tonight. Gets his first tray, seven points on the night for number three. Makes it a 73-65 game. From LeGrand, isn't that where Eastern Oregon University is? It's LeGrand, Oregon. Right? Sounds right. Yeah, one of my last player that I coached in high school just finished up her career at the Nationals playing for Eastern Oregon. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Had a 30-win season. You get 30 wins in any kind of a college basketball level. That that's, is, that, that's, that's, that's productivity right yeah, there. Yeah, that's a good season. Unless you play 70 games, then eh, maybe well, not so much. Well, I don't think they play 70 yet I don't in think college. They, I don't so. think they do either as Lamar Harris misses the free throw. 9.1 seconds left. So if you're Portland, you're feeling pretty good. You uh, Not only did you make it to the semifinals, you had a very productive game, a great weekend. Everybody got you're in. Coming, everybody got in. A lot of scoring. It was balanced. Not a lot of mistakes. Injury-free. And uh, you're moving on to the next round. Yeah. Did a good job tonight. Final score, 93-65. to 65. The Portland Panthers have punched their ticket. They joined Peninsula and Lynn Benton. One more spot remaining. It's going to be Everett or North Idaho, and we're going to find out who that's going to be. As we're going to take a quick break right now. I say quick break. It'll be about 10 or 15 minutes. We'll sign back on and bring you the action as the Trojans and the Cardinals get ready to do battle. Mike Buckholtz, fun game. Thank you as always, sir. Yeah, it was fun. So let's stretch our legs a little bit and come back and do it again in a few. We will. We will. So we're signing off for now, but uh, not for very long. Once again, your final score, 93-65 in favor of the Portland Panthers. This is STSPN. <laughs>